China is incredibly important everywhere, right? And we see that importance growing through time. For a number of countries in Africa, China is now the single largest trade partner. Hello and welcome back to the Bankers Masterclass series on Africa's growth prospects in association with ABSA. I'm James King, the Bankers Africa and Middle East editor, and with me is Jeff Gable, head of research at ABSA. In this next chapter, we will be discussing the outlook for Africa's relationship with China. Um, Jeff, obviously this is a very uh, sort of dynamic relationship. It's evolved in recent years. How would you characterize that economic relationship between Africa and China today? I can't imagine there's any place in the world which has a, a different answer than what we're going to have for Africa. China is incredibly important everywhere, right? And we see that importance growing through time. For a number of countries in Africa, China is now the single largest trade partner. For important infrastructure projects and others, China is a critical source of financing and in many cases the construction itself. And as we think more forward and we think about sort of Belt and Road and other big initiatives, right, if we as Africa want to be part of sort of global supply chains and global economy, well, China's going to be an absolutely critical component of that story. You mentioned Belt and Road there, and obviously that's been hitting headlines around the world for the last few years. Where does Africa sit within that initiative, and what does it really mean for the continent moving forward? So there are a number of big initiatives uh, sort of directly related to Belt and Road that, that we have. In most cases, they're transport related. So we think about a number of ports down um, uh, sort of the eastern African coast. You think about significant um, progress along various rail lines, sort of linking um, uh, landlocked countries or, or major landlocked uh, economic centers into the coast. You have some ports and rail facilities in West Africa as well. So it's very much about transport. Now, whether it is in the first instance sort of using uh, Chinese infrastructure expertise and, and sort of uh, construction, whether it's about trying to ensure sort of uh, China's prominence in, in terms of providing export markets for Chinese goods, I, I think that part is very much open to uh, debate and discussion, but certainly where I see this as an opportunity for Africa is our ability as a continent to get the infrastructure necessary so that we're able to move beyond simply exporting basic commodities. Because we know, for the most part, ex-South Africa, ex-parts of Egypt is something we haven't done very well at in the past. Perhaps some of this infrastructure provides us with those opportunities. Okay, so there are some big opportunities there linked mm. to that relationship. But in terms of some of the challenges, some critics have pointed to the fact that maybe some markets in Africa are getting too dependent on China. Perhaps Chinese involvement is accelerating debt on the continent. Do you see any dangers uh, linked to that growing relationship? Well, let's just think about the debt angle, right? So it is not the case that the Chinese are coming to Africa, or indeed anywhere, and saying we quite like to build you some infrastructure, and then once it's up and running, we're all going to enjoy it. No, that stuff has got a price to it. And those price tags, particularly given the size of African economies, those price tags are very, very substantial. If it was easy to do, we probably would have done it already. It's not that we didn't realize we didn't need more infrastructure. It's that finding sort of the ability to put in place 30, 40, 50 year projects in a short span of time was made very difficult. So we have an example of something called the single gauge railway, which links right now uh, the port city of Mombasa in Kenya and links in Nairobi, which is significantly inland. The expectations are that that linkage will then go into uh, Uganda and, and farther afield. The great news is the first part of this project delivered on time and, and under budget. Hmm? The challenge is that even under budget, these projects are very expensive and you need to ensure, and it's never quite clear, you need to ensure that they aren't white elephants. That at the end, you've delivered the infrastructure, now you must find the economic benefit to go with it to ensure that that infrastructure is affordable. And I have no doubt that if we look globally, some projects are going to meet that hurdle and some won't. And that's not unique to Belt and Road initiatives, that's infrastructure more broadly. And in Africa, we're going to learn the same things. No doubt some of these projects make absolute economic sense from day one. Others will grow into 
and some we might never go into. It's going to be learning by doing, unfortunately. I don't think there's going to be any guarantee. Okay, but there will be huge investments across Africa with mm. Chinese backing. And, and what does all of this really mean for sort of Africa's banking sector, this level of engagement, this level of investment? What does the future look like? Well, certainly I, I suppose it becomes very uh, interesting and, and, and exciting and engaged. So you saw already better part of a decade ago a very substantial investment from the Chinese banking sector into the African banking sector. and, and um, that was uh, CITC with, with Standard Bank for ourselves. It's ABSA. We've recently done a, an MOU with the Chinese Construction Bank. But more broadly across the continent, you're going to be looking for these pairings, right? You're going to be looking for regional African banks, the ability to service across more than one economy uh, and with deep local understanding. And you're going to need to have linkages with large Chinese banks that have the clients and the projects and bringing the two together. I think we're seeing some of that now, but that's definitely going to be a, a substantial story going forward. And again, I would say probably not uniquely African. I imagine the exact same question is relevant if you think about China and Latin America or China and uh, the Middle East or China and Southeast Asia. I suspect they're similar. Jeff, thank you very much. Thank you.